Hi everybody, welcome to Love Nation Bible Study. Listen, you've come to the right place at the right time. This is the spot. It's Bible study time. This is one of my favorite times and one of my favorite places. We get to study and learn together. I want you right now to take your phone, uh, get your emails, uh, send a note to somebody and tell them to tune in now. Make sure they can tune in now so they'll get the information fresh. We want everybody to join us and to learn today because we're in a series of studying in the kingdom. Remember, in this year, we are now at Love Nation. We are kingdom citizens and we're studying kingdom and a part of kingdom is knowing how to operate in power. We'll get to some other parts of kingdom later, but right now we're knowing how learning and studying how to operate in power. And so this series that we're in now is called Just Add Power learning how to add power in your life. We have been in Acts chapter one. That's where we've been. And that's where we're going to pick up now. And we're going to uh, finish up here tonight. Acts chapter one. So go there with me now. Get your Bibles. Acts chapter one. Now, what we've been talking about thus far in Acts chapter one, just for a very light recap, um, it, this is where Jesus comes to the disciples in Acts chapter one. Bless God. And uh, he proves to them that he is resurrected when you go through uh, the verses. And I've gone through this in the last uh, uh, lesson with you. But he proves to them that he is alive and he has a command for them before he goes back up to heaven. And he wants to tell them to wait. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift. And we've discussed all of that. Wait for the gift my, fam my father promised you, which you have heard me speak about. That's Acts chapter four. Tonight, we're going to Acts chapter five. So turn with me to verse five, chapter one. I'm sorry, Acts chapter one, verse five. Acts chapter one, verse five is where we're going to pick up. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Verse four, let me go back. And while they were gathered together, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift the father promised, which you have heard me discuss for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Verse six. So when they came together, they asked him, Lord, will you at that time, at this time, restore the kingdom of Israel? Let's stick with verse five for a minute, because I want to show you something about when we're waiting on the Lord. Now, this if you if you've gone back and you've uh, gone through some of the Bible studies that we've talked about in power, you will understand that a part of our issue now is that we have to wait. And most people don't like waiting. You know, we're that Burger King society. We've talked about that. But here now in verse five, uh, Jesus tells uh, the disciples, he says, John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So check this out. This is where we are now. Jesus begins to talk to them again where they are. Here is when, when, when the prophet, when God sends a prophet to speak to us, when he gives that word of prophecy, when he makes a promise, when God begins to speak to us about uh, 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 operating in faith, uh, speaking to us about what we haven't uh, uh, seen yet, what, what we don't know is coming, he relates it to something that we understand. Here is something to know about your father, who is king of kings and lord of lords, who is El Shaddai. Jehovah Jireh, who, who formed us in his image. This is how much your father who art in heaven and who is your ever present uh, help loves you. He says that when for John baptized with water, but in a few days, you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. He begins to break down for the disciples what this waiting period is going to look like. Help me teach Holy Ghost. God is saying to you that 
that when you have to wait on him, let me tell you some things that, that will be uh, uh, markers. If you've ever gone down a highway and you've seen the highway markers, the mile markers to let you know where you're going and how long it is before you get to the next mile. It may not necessarily be your destination, but the mile markers let you know how far you've gone in the journey. Help me teach, Holy Ghost. Some of us need to know how far we've gone in the journey because sometimes when you've been waiting so long, it's easy to give up. Uh, let me talk for just a minute or two to some people who've been waiting on something for so long that you don't even know where your mile markers are anymore. God, I've been waiting on this joy, but it just seems to escape me. I've been waiting on this peace, but it seems to elude me. God, I've been waiting uh, on this and I've been waiting on that. I've been waiting on a new career. I've been waiting on a check. I've been, I've been waiting on a spouse. I've been waiting on a reload. I've been waiting and waiting. And, and God, when is this thing coming? Because here's the thing, God, I know you told me this. I know you told me this is coming. I know your voice and a strangers I will not follow. But God, I need to know where am I now? Where's my mile marker? I want to talk to some people who, who just need a mile. My God, if you will just give me a confirmation. Don't nobody else need to know my business. Don't nobody else need to know what my mile marker looks like. But God, if you can just give me a mile marker, if you can just let me know along this highway that I'm trying to stay on. I'm trying not to get off this highway. I'm trying not to take shortcuts. I'm, I'm trying not to take side roads. You told me to stay on the highway. And as a matter of fact, you told me not only to stay on, on this highway, but to stay in this lane. God, not only am I trying not to get in other people's lanes, it's hard trying to stay on the highway without cutting off over here. Give me a mile marker. Jesus says for John baptized with water. Let me show you what it looks like. They could relate to John baptizing with water, even though John was gone. John has John the Baptist has been beheaded. So even though John was gone, they could relate to the experience of John baptizing with water. They were there. As a matter of fact, a few of Jesus's disciples were also John the Baptist's disciples. He's talking to people. Help me teach Holy Ghost. He's talking to the disciples about where they come from, because where they come from is going to give them a glimpse of where they're going. Let me talk to three or four more people on here. Some of us want to put away our past. Some of us want to put away some things that we've come out of. But let me help you. God bought you out of it and delivered you from some stuff, some people, and some places to give you power to go back and get the rest of them out. He didn't just deliver you just to be delivering you, but Moses, come out from among them. I, I want to take you out to a wilderness, and I want to put you through a process, Moses, and then I'm going to send you back to the same Egypt that you came from. I, I want to talk to some Moses that are looking at this streaming right now. Um, and I want to tell you that you've always had the power. You had the power when you were in uh, a little basin uh, and when you were floating down the Nile River, um, you still had the power. You had the power when alligators and crocodiles and, and hippopotamuses were after you on the Nile. Uh, you had the power when drug addicts and, and pimps were after you. You had the power when people denied your jobs. You had the power when the bank said you couldn't get it. You had the power when the credit said you didn't have it. God said, all I need you to do is remember where I bought you from. Power. Power. He says, I want you to remember, huh? John baptized with water while you're waiting. Here's some things that are familiar to you. Isn't it like God who will use something familiar to you to take you out of your comfort zone? I love him. Um, he will take you out of your comfort zone by bringing something familiar to you so you can say, yeah, I remember that, but that's my old thing. I remember that, but I, I used to be like that. Um, that's my old, th I, rem I, 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 I can relate to it, but that's the old me. I don't have to go back to 
being that way, but I can go back there and still be my new me and deliver you out of your old mess. Come on, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. Come on, I need five people who are going to stream in with me, who are going to send this message to somebody and say, I just need you to have the power. I Come on, send it to somebody and hashtag them. Send a message on this. Say, I really need you to see this because I need you to get the power. The power is, see, this is the thing. I preached this sermon last weekend. This is the thing. We are, we, people don't want to be with you until, until you become something, um, until you've made a name for yourself, until you got a little cheddar in your pocket, so to speak, until your coins rattling. But in the process, uh, when you're going through the process, uh, here Jesus takes the disciples and everybody knows them uh, as Jesus' disciples. But Jesus said, if you stay right here um, and if you wait on me, uh, yeah, they're going to know you were with me, uh, but greater works um, will you do than I did. Uh, I need to talk to some people um, who know you have greatness in you, but you just don't know how to wield the power yet. Uh, Jesus has come. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, Jesus comes uh, to teach us uh, that the power um, and learning of the power is an ongoing everyday learning curve. I'll teach you about that in the next lesson. Uh, but he says to them, while you're waiting, uh, I don't want you to get lackadaisical. I don't want you to get lazy. I don't want you to get left behind. Uh, I don't want you to get distracted because I understand. This is Jesus speaking now. He says, I understand what happens in the waiting process. Uh, in the waiting process, you know, even, 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 even in earth, we call it the holding cell. Huh? Or we call it a holding pattern. It's when something's got a hold on you and you can't move any further. There are some things that uh, help me teach Holy Ghost. There are some things that God has to allow to hold us, to hold us in a pattern so we can wait. And he wants that hold to be us. Uh, he wants us to hold us. It, it doesn't have to be the enemy doing something. We don't have to give the enemy credit for that. We've been delivered. Remember, we have power and authority over him. Uh, he says, I want you to have um, some self-preservation. Uh, I want you to have some self-control. I want you to operate in the fruit of the spirit. Stay here. Here. Have some authority over yourself uh, because I'm going to send you some more power. So while you're waiting in this holding pattern, you all be strong for each other. Here's my next point. When he says uh, for John baptized with water, he's reminding them. You, you remember all of you were together when John baptized with water. There was a witness there was an artist, what he's telling them that in your waiting process, you're not alone. You had each other when John baptized with water. You were witnesses around the pool. You were witnesses around the lake. You were witnesses around whatever body of water John used in order to baptize. There were, you were never alone if John baptized and he didn't leave you alone when, when he was baptizing. How much more will my father do for you? He'll never leave you nor forsake you, but you got to do what he says. You got to stay here because this power is not a power you can wield on your own. You need instructions for this power. He said, so, but in a few days, now he tells them how long the holding pattern will be. That's how uh, many of us, we, we need that. God, how long, how long we got to deal with this? How, how long, how long we got, how long this thing going to hurt? How, how long, how long must, even Jesus said, how must, how long must I suffer these people? You know, I, I, we want to know how long somebody, somebody send me a note, hashtag respond. How long? Isn't that what we ask when we're uncomfortable? Jesus knows. Help me. Holy Ghost. There is never a place, uh, a, a position or time that we are in that Jesus has never been there. He knows when we're uncomfortable. He knows when we're in unfamiliar territory. He knows when we're in a place we don't want to be. And that's not always an uncomfortable place. It's just a hateful place. But he says, listen, 
uh, in a few days. Stick around here. I know y'all fishermen. I, I, I know you got jobs. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I, I know, I know you, you keep telling the pastor, I, I, you know, I can't be there because I got to go to work. Uh, uh, but but, you, but, but you, you don't miss nothing. Now, you work from home, but you don't miss nothing. You don't miss nothing else, but you, you miss service. Uh, uh, you, 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 you miss outreach, you miss evangelism. Uh, this, this is the time you re you remember when we were all around the altar and we were praying for you, uh, for your healing. And now you got your healing, but we don't see you. You remember when we were praying for, for your loan and for your house. And now you got your loan and your house and you know, you know, we don't see you. Uh, well, you remember we were praying for your business and now you got your business. We don't see you. Jesus said, if you just give me a few days, if you can just hold out, you remember when he came down from the mountain and he looked at the disciples and he said, can you pray with me for one hour? If there's a time frame that when he says, he says, I, I, if, if, if you just give me a few days, if you just stay right here and you don't get too anxious for anything, if you find yourself getting anxious, fall to your knees and remember my name, pray in my name, whatever you say in my name, I'm going to make it happen. So you'll remember how close we're. this is how he's talking to you and me, his disciples. This is whatever you say in my name. Let, let me help you about how powerful this name is. Anybody with children on this line, respond to me. Respond uh, uh, on this stream. If you have children, when your children call your name, uh, you respond because there is a link, a bloodline between you and your children. My children can call me and I don't respond to them. If I'm in, if I'm in the house, wait a minute, they don't even have to say Tina. If they say Tina, they've called Called me out of my name because it is irresponsible and, ir and disrespectful for my children to call me by my first name because that's how I raised them, you see. We'll talk about that another day. But if they say mama, if they say mommy, if they say mom, as soon as my ears hear it, my response is according to the timbre of their voices. If I do that with my children, how much more does God do that with us? He says, stay right here. I'm going to give you a few days. Now, when you get here in the next few days, I've got something for you that's going to change your life and the course of my story. Oh, I'm sorry. History forever but you won't get it unless you stay right here i'm gonna need you to stay here and when you stay here when you tune in again for this next setting you'll find out just exactly what they get when they return not by power nor by might but by your spirit god move by your spirit on these people that are streaming in now be it right this moment, be it whenever they get a chance to look at it, however many times they see it, to sow into this ministry power. One man plants, another waters, but God gives the increase. This word is a seed that is being planted. You will water it. You will. That's right. You will be the water for this seed. So so into this, so into this uh, uh, ground, so into fertile ground. And when you have done that, watch God give the increase when you wait on him, when you seek out power and authority and when you do what he asks you to do. Come back with me next week and we're going to finish up when he says you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. I love you. And listen, I've had a great time with you tonight. I'll see you next week. God bless.